All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We're going to break down the McClellan Oscillator, okay? Uh, we're gonna show you guys what it is, how to use it, and really the way that I like to use it myself, okay? Um, versus just the you know normal average standard way of using it. Now, we also used our friend at ChatGPT to give you guys a quick breakdown of the McClellan Oscillator, as well as you know the way that I like to use it um, uploading a chart, you know, uploading that chart image into there and letting chat GPT interpret it. Um, so, you know, just in case my explanation doesn't seem, you know, technical enough, uh, we do have a nice little breakdown we're going to give you guys as well. So it's going to be a really great video. Uh, lots of people like the McClellan oscillator. A lot of people use this uh, and some people may not know how to use it properly. So you should learn a lot in today's video. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new, as always, though, the content provided on this channel is just for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the disclaimer. Uh, I started a completely free newsletter for you all called Investment Intelligence. If you're new to the channel, sign up for that newsletter, okay? There's a link in the description. I give out free valuable content, free trade ideas as well every single week, right? I try to sprinkle in one to two free trade ideas, and this is what it'll look like highlighting the chart conditions, showing you guys the actual chart itself. And many of these trade ideas have worked out very very nicely, such as this rising wedge on SWK, you know, going over the conditions, the targets, you know, the MACD, the RSI with different things that we're looking at. And you can see how that trade played out very, very nicely coming down and hitting those targets. So if you're fans of free valuable content, you like free trade ideas, you want to get those sent directly to your inbox, sign up for the newsletter. Okay. There's only about one to two free trade ideas a week. And the reason is because it's quality over quantity, right? I'm not spamming you guys every single day with five to 10 penny stocks or micro cap stocks that are hoping, you know, one of them just pumps and I can say, Oh, Hey, look, that trade idea works, you know, one out of those five stocks. No, it's, it's high quality setups uh, that, you know, I look for and try to find and then provide to you guys for completely free. You can also just join the Investment Intelligence Discord. That's where you get access to all of my different trade ideas, analysis, resources, valuable indicators, and you also get my chart layouts, right? Such as this one here, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, with Thinkorswim, you can share your flexible grids, you can share your chart layouts. So if you're in the Discord, you actually have access to this whole chart right here, where all of these arrows are drawn, or your McClellan oscillator looks just like this chart right here. Now, um, typically, people look for, you know, uh, above 100 and below 100, so 100 and negative 100. Uh, but to me, you know, I really like to look at this negative 155 area and then this positive 170 area, okay? Uh, typically, you know, once you get above those levels uh, or below those levels, uh, those levels that I've added, that's really when things either tend to get a little too frothy in the market. You can see up here, we're a little frothy. And then what do we get? We get a small little pullback here you know, uh, same thing over here, right? And then we experience a pullback, right? And it's happened many, many times uh, before in the past. Uh, but really my favorite way to use it and, and you know, one of the, my favorite things to do with it uh, is to actually use it to spot divergences. So uh, you may be asking yourself, right, a question, what is a divergence? Well, it's simply when, you know, they're moving opposite of each other. So in this case, you know, we clearly have a green arrow here, you know, suggesting that the S&P 500 is going up. And what do we see on our McClellan oscillator? Well, we're making higher highs, highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. On the McClellan oscillator, we're making highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. So we're actually in a divergence where this is making higher highs on the S&P 500 and the McClellan oscillator is making lower highs. Uh, now, in this case, you would say, hey, well, there's a potential here that the S&P 500 could be due for a pullback because of this negative divergence on the McClellan oscillator. And sure enough, you see a pullback, right? And these types of divergences occur many times. Uh, you can see here, again, we're getting that, you know, higher highs with lower highs. And what do we get? Well, we end up getting a pullback. Now in that pullback, we actually made a low here and then a lower low, and we made a low and a higher low right over here. So now we actually have a positive divergence, a bullish divergence, where, hey, the S&P 500 is pulling back potentially because of that negative divergence we had. But in this pullback, we've now created a positive divergence. And you can see that that divergence led us into our next rally. OK, um, you know, same thing over here where the S&P is making lower lows. Right. And here we're making lows and higher lows. And sure enough, what do you see? Well, you see a strong rally. So <clears throat> it's a very good potential bottoming signal. Right. You know, this was a nice bottom over here that led to a long term secular bull market. 
or, uh, you know, multi-year uh, bull market right here. Uh, and same thing over here, um, you know, back in, in, in 08, really in 09, uh, is when we saw this come in and actually signal the, you know, the bottom here, right? Once we finally made that lower low and we made a, you know, another higher low here on the McClellan oscillator, uh, we've really just rallied tremendously since then uh, with a couple crashes periodically in between. But again, those potential crashes, you can potentially spot them, you know, by using these divergences, right? Over here, higher highs, lower highs. And what do you see? Strong pullback in the market over here, higher highs here. We're seeing much lower highs, strong pullback in the market. OK, so that was a signal for 2022 for the 2022 bear market that, hey, you know, we could be, you know, due for a drop here heading into 2022 um, because of the fact that the McClellan oscillator is really just making these much lower highs here, uh, even though the stock market itself is actually making these higher highs. And here recently, um, you know, most recently, right, we had this period where we came in here, we made higher highs, uh, but the McClellan oscillator was making lower highs. And you can see that we had a pretty strong pullback the summer of this year, 2023. Uh, and that was yet again, just another potential indicator here that, hey, uh, you know, the market was due for a pullback. So uh, that's really my favorite way to use it is to spot these divergences. Uh, it is useful for just kind of telling when things, hey, you know, maybe things are a little bit too frothy when we're all the way up here. Uh, and, you know, maybe you don't want to aggressively be shorting things, um, you know, when we're really, really low on the McClellan oscillator as well. Now, the McClellan oscillator is a market breadth indicator typically used to assess the short term momentum of the stock market by comparing the number of rising and falling stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. It helps identify overbought and oversold conditions. Reading above 100 suggests overbought, while readings below 100 indicate oversold. In these scenarios, a reversal may potentially occur. Now, when divergences occur between the McClellan oscillator and the S&P 500, such as those noted on the chart, it suggests a discrepancy between the market index's price movement and underlying market breadth. Remember, the McClellan oscillator is a measurement of market breadth. People talk about market breadth a lot and not many people understand. There's different ways to measure market breadth and the McClellan oscillator is a very useful one. Now, for example, if the S&P 500 is trending upward while the oscillator is declining, it may indicate weakening momentum and a potential pullback. Conversely, if the S&P 500 is trending downward while the oscillator is rising, it may suggest underlying strength and a potential rally. These divergences can be leading indicators of potential reversals in the S&P 500's price action. Now, that's a very key word right there, a leading indicator. There's different types of indicators, guys. There's leading and there's also lagging indicators, okay? And something like your MACD, your moving average convergence divergence, the MACD indicator, this is what's known as a lagging indicator. And it's going to tell you what's happened after it's already happened, right? So oftentimes people look for bullish crossovers or bearish crossovers in the MACD, uh, and those don't occur be, you know, until that bearish or bullish move has already started because it is a lagging indicator. Using something like the McClellan oscillator and spotting these divergences could be a potential leading indicator, okay? And we've gone over the several areas of divergence here and you know, basically explain that to you guys where, hey, it's not guaranteed that just because there's a divergence uh, between the oscillator and the S&P 500, it doesn't mean that it always is going to work out 100% of the time, uh, but it could give you some potential insight into the future as a leading indicator, suggesting that, hey, maybe things could potentially be due for a pullback. Maybe things could be potentially due for a rally here at these points. Uh, and that's really one of my favorite ways to use the McClellan oscillator. All right. Now, don't forget to sign up for that free newsletter, Investment Intelligence. You can get those emails, trade ideas sent directly to your inbox. Uh, if you enjoyed today's analysis and you ever want to reach out to me, uh, you can do that through the Ko-Fi page, right? That's where people can request a YouTube video on the topic of their choice. You can also book one-on-one -on -one workshop sessions with me. All right. I do 30-minute and one-hour sessions. You can go over whatever it is that you would like. Uh, and there's also this buy a coffee button, basically a way to leave a tip uh, or donation for the free valuable content I do put out there. And don't forget, you can join the Investment Intelligence Discord where you get this chart layout, okay? And you can get it to look exactly how it is right there uh, with all of the divergences already noted. Uh, so you guys can go back and reference those and potentially use that and just make things a little bit easier, right? Maybe you guys actually have a life unlike me and you don't have 35 different measurements of market breadth. Uh, which all 35 of those flexible grids and chart layouts are available to all of the members of the Discord. 
Um, you know, there's many, many resources in there. Uh, and besides those resources, uh, you also get access to all of the different trade ideas that aren't included in the newsletter, uh, such as many of these plays over here that have worked out very nicely over the past month or two, uh, and as well as the custom scripts and indicators I have in Thinkorswim um, and, you know, the strategy that I use to get these really nice returns day trading S&P 500 options. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.